All right, I want to welcome in our political panel. We start with former New York Congresswoman Nan Hayworth back with us this morning. Project 21 National Advisory Board member Christopher Arps. Chris, nice to see you. Political analyst Mark Halperin and constitutional attorney Amir Benno. All right, I want to deep dive the gloves and then we'll put it to rest. Um, this was, uh, by the way, if you were the editor at the, uh, Mark Halperin, let's say you're the editor at the San Francisco Chronicle. Why would you let this, this op-ed even run? Excuse me because it's provocative and they're 3,000 miles away from reality. Ooh, hmm. Good. Chris Arp, same question. <laughs> I think that's pretty succinct right there with yeah. the way Mark put it. I think it just placates to the liberal base, and I think it just also shows just the mindset of most liberals as they want to be offended by something, anything. Here's the, uh, let, me, let me just, all right, so her name's Ingrid Sayer Ochi. That's the uh, former UC Berkeley professor. Uh, and this, this made it into the San Francisco Chronicle. She calls Bernie Sanders' gloves white privilege. This is a quote. The senator, she said, manifests privilege, white privilege, male privilege, and class privilege in ways that my students could see and feel. Now, I haven't been a college student in 20 years, but all I see and feel is that it was like 22 degrees to start two Wednesdays ago in Washington, D.C., and those gloves make a whole lot of sense, especially if you're from the state of Vermont, Nan Hayworth. <laughs> Yes, uh, Rob, those gloves are as much white privilege as the song White Christmas is white privilege. In other words, yeah, not at all. But I agree with uh, Mark and Chris. Uh, this is strictly provocative. Uh, but it does illustrate the mindset in academia and the fact that the writer uh, is uh, in a position of uh, authority over students uh, should actually concern us uh, on a, a fairly deep level because she is obsessed with the idea of division. Uh, and that's antithetical to what we should represent as Americans. Amir? I agree. I, I have to say everything is viewed through the lens of identity politics. And keep in mind that Joe Biden wanted to restore this critical race theory uh, where everything is about white privilege and uh, everything has to be viewed through the lens of uh, some sort of male privilege, gender privilege, et cetera, et cetera. So he wants now to, to have all federal agencies taught about this. He wants this in the, uh, in the school systems. Uh, so I think we're going to see more of this as uh, you know, outrageous as that is. You know, it's kind of interesting, too. Like, if you just put yourself in the position of a college student, let's say, for example, you disagreed with the professor as she's up there, you know, virtue signaling, talking about this whole thing. Like, I would be, I'd be in the back of the class the way back, and I'd be like, what? I totally, what are you talking about? I disagree. It was cold. Somebody gave him mittens, and he's from Vermont, which is kind of a, you know, they're, it's, a, it's a different vibe up there in the, uh, the Green Mountain State. All right, let's move on. Uh, Kamala Harris yesterday talking about how the Biden administration is cutting literally thousands of jobs throughout the country uh, with the stroke of a pen. Here's here's a very informed Kamala Harris yesterday. Take a listen. All of those skilled workers who are in the coal industry and, and, and transferring those skills to what we need to do in terms of dealing with reclaiming abandoned um, uh, landmines. Mark, landmines? <laughs> Well, she meant mine lands, but, you know, somewhere in some uh, semi-dark room, a Republican opposition researcher is collecting all this stuff on immigration, on the economy and jobs, and they're going to bundle it all up together. And in 2022, maybe sooner, we'll see if uh, Vice President Harris and Joe Biden have a formula that the American people like or not, particularly on this issue of jobs during a pandemic. Chris? Thoughts? Well, you know, you know, the vice president, she misspoke and, you know, talked about landmines. But the bigger mistake with that was going into uh, to that state where Joe Manchin is a hero, practically, and uh, talking about coal miners and destroying their jobs without yeah. letting him know that he was coming to the state. You know, Joe Manchin is a pivotal swing vote this this, uh, this year, and doing that uh, really didn't make him very happy. Nan, is this an example? Mistake. No, Chris, you make a good, a good point. Joe Manchin's now one of the most important members of the U.S. Senate. Uh, Nan, is this a good example of why Kamala wasn't on the top of the ticket, why she couldn't win primaries? She's just totally inauthentic. Yes, yes, Rob, it is. Uh, and she was at the very bottom of the Democrat uh, primary uh, for that reason. Uh, and also, she couldn't manage the funds, which should also concern us. But she is fundamentally unserious. She is glib. She says whatever comes into her head. And it all ends up sounding 
uh, like Marie Antoinette. You know, she just she just doesn't get it. And yeah. this is a perfect example of that. I want to talk about, Mark, you brought up those immigration orders, uh, the executive orders that uh, President Biden signed uh, yesterday, three of them in all. Uh, you know, they want to reunite families at the border. And uh, Amir, I'll, I'll point this at you. And then, Mark, I want to get your reaction because I know that you were all over this yesterday. But it's just it's fascinating. You, if you put it under the umbrella of reuniting families, it's very difficult for anyone to sort of oppose uh, the orders that he signed. Well, <laughs> Yes, I mean, and that's that's sort of how he's packaging it up for public consumption. But what he's what he's really doing, and I, what I found was so fascinating, is that he he Joe Biden says, "I'm not making law. I'm just sort of rescinding bad policy." Right. But what he's doing is is he's he is making law, and he's uh, he's tearing down all sorts of constructs that were put in place that helped protect uh, both American workers, uh, criminal safety in our communities. Uh, and also uh, protect against humanitarian abuses on uh, the, the the long journey up here from Guatemala and Honduras and uh, and El Salvador. Uh, and so for him to say, look, I'm uh, I'm doing this, and this is a, a great, wonderful thing for humanity, is is rich. Mark, your thoughts? I mean, my my yeah, thought know. is just you know, if, it's all about if you open up the borders, that's going to mean cheaper work. And, and cheap wages and people are going to make more money, you know, sort of the stuff that we heard during the Obama years that was sort of the secret of the immigration policy. Yeah. Look, immigration is now what it's always been. It's one of the toughest political issues to grapple with. And when you've seen politicians like Barack Obama or George W. Bush try to liberalize our immigration laws, they've always led with, or at least co-led with, the notion of more security. Joe Biden's trying this in a different way. He's not talking very much about security. He's talking mostly about liberalizing the, the immigration laws. And it is a fascinating political bet that that is the mood of the American people. It's certainly the mood of the base of the Democratic Party, but it is not the position of lots of people in the country. And again, this is a big, a big fascinating bet, the way he's approaching this. Nan, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree uh, with Mark. Politically, this is a move toward uh, what is perceived as the Democratic uh, base position, but in a time when unemployment in the United States, especially in big blue states that are fiscally mismanaged, uh, is extraordinarily high, uh, the debt that we face from uh, compensating folks who have not been working, not paying their rent, uh, and other expenses because of COVID is enormously high. We are promising. Uh, at the, usually a large suite of social welfare benefits to immigrants when they first uh, enter this country illegally, uh, often claiming asylum. Uh, this is, uh, I don't think this is going to sit well with uh, the American taxpayer nor with the American worker. All right, panel, we're going to leave it there. Uh, you guys are coming back right after the break. we got to talk about uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki and some of her, uh, her recent we call them Saki Dodges here on Wake Up America. We'll get into that right after the break, so stay with us.